Hey, uh, this morning I'm very excited. We actually have a, a special guest that I'm going to invite up in a second. Uh, when, we, when I came to Seaford a year and a half ago and began to get to know uh, the, the community, uh, what's going on here, and how we as a church uh, are being called by God to fit into that, one of the recurring themes, and we talked about this when we, we did all of our meetings at the start of the year about where we're going as a church, one of the places we feel like, and I've heard this over and over from many people, that we need to engage with the next generation, with the younger generation. And it doesn't look like it used to look. You can't just rely on them showing up on a Sunday and having a class. We need to go to where they are and engage with them. And so one of the things we've been talking about is beginning a mentorship program, specifically with teens. And so we kind of want to introduce where that's going today. And so I'm going to invite up Jake Moss. Jake, why don't you come on up? Some of you know Jake. Give him a hand. That's right. There we go. So Jake was a Jake. I, I met in Starbucks, which is always a great place to meet someone for the first time. Yes. And uh, I've gotten to know Jake a little bit here over the last few months. Uh, he's a delightful uh, young man, and I can say that now, even though you're actually not Too really kind. young. Not uh, young anymore. <laughs> and uh, Jake uh, works with Young Life. What's your official title? I'm the area director. Area director for this whole this whole part of Delmarva. Mm -hmm. And so uh, before we talk about what we were planning to do and how we're going to partner in this. Uh, mentorship program, why don't you tell everybody a little bit just about yourself, your family, um, because they're not all here today because you have all the typical travails of a young family. That's true, yeah. So uh, my name is Jake Moss. I am, um, I'm 29, so I'm not, I know I'm still young, but I'm almost 30, and at 30 you can't say, like you can't say, I'm just in my 20s, it's fine. Like, <laughs> no one says I'm just in my 30s. Anyway, um, <laughs> they might, but they shouldn't. Uh, so I'm married, <laughs> married, my wife's name is Mandy, we've been married for seven years this summer, we have three kiddos and one on the way, uh, Eloise, who's here, she's down the hall, she's five, I don't know if it's down the hall, I'm bad with that directions, way. that way is where she is, she's, I hope she's not over there, <laughs> um, uh, Eloise, Joel is our son, he'll be two at the end of June, Zane is the one we actually just adopted, um, I say just, it was a year ago now, but he'll be two in July, and then we have one on the way, come in October, so that's my family, uh, and the boys have the stomach bug, uh, so, uh, God's mercy is new each day, right, we're hoping for tomorrow's <laughs> to be a little different than, no, I'm just kidding, uh, it's, we trust in him, not in us. <laughs> And so uh, you've been working with Young Life for, for quite some time already. Like, how long have you been working with that organization? Yeah, so I, so I met the Lord through Young Life when I was in high school, and then I volunteered when I let, uh, was a volunteer leader in college, volunteered for three years, and then ser I've served on staff now for, this will be my eighth year. Going now, some school. people aren't familiar with Young Life. What is Young Life? Yeah, Young Life uh, is a ministry uh, whose mission is essentially the Great Commission, uh, but towards teenagers. So it's uh, to introduce adolescents to Jesus Christ and help them go in their faith or help them grow in their faith. And so we do that through a variety of methods. One, like Pastor Weldon said, um, going to where they are rather than waiting for them to come to us. Um, so you're engaged in the schools and yes. the people there and you meet yep. with kids and so on. So I just went to lunch on Friday. I have a really good relationship and partnership with the middle school and the high school. And I went to high school lunch on Friday uh, and there's not a lot scarier than walking into a high school cafeteria. Um, but I get to do it, and I've, now that I've done it long enough, I have a group of students that I know who I get to sit with and get to know and get to meet their friends, and it's just really, really a special time. I know the staff, I serve the school, whatever I can to just, I mean, it's what Jesus did. Jesus showed up from heaven and just started serving people, and that's yeah. what we talked about doing. So that's, awesome. And so, so your organization, and you particularly in, in this area, have this advantage of connecting with students where a lot of us don't have the, the ability to get into those environments. And so we want to leverage that, and rather than try and create something on our own, yep. we began talking about, well, how can we do this together? So talk a little bit about this idea of mentoring teens, why that's so important, what you've seen work in that before we talk about what that's going to look like here. Absolutely. So, so I think mentoring, uh, mentoring changed my life. I'll tell you, when I was in high school, I had a young life leader. His name was Joel, part of why my son's name is Joel. Uh, and we're still in touch to this day. And he would take me and two other guys. We had a big Young Life group, but he would take me and two other guys on Friday mornings before school to Denny's every week. And he would buy us breakfast, and he just cared about us. And it was that care and compassion that showed me uh, what the love of God was really like. And so I think that that is the essence of what Young Life and what mentoring is all about. I have a scripture 
that I'd love to share that I think really just hammers at home. I was reading this this morning. This is in 1 Thessalonians. And it's Paul talking to the people of Thessalonica, and it says this. But we were gentle among you, like a nursing mother taking care of her own children. Happy Mother's Day. Didn't pick that on purpose. Um, So being affectionately desirous of you, we were ready to share with you not only the gospel of God, but also our own selves, because you had become very dear to us. Another translation said not only the gospel of God, but our lives as well. And so I think there's a biblical foundation for mentorship. I think you see it throughout scripture with like Eli talking to Samuel and Samuel living there. You see it um, in Jesus having kind of his three, right? He often would withdraw to different places with Peter, James, and John, and then even further would have experiences with just Peter um, that kind of showed a mentoring relationship. But I think one of the most prominent ones you can see that I'll share one more scripture from uh, is Paul and Timothy. Um, And I often think about who is my Timothy? Who is the person? And I work with a Mm -hmm. lot of students, a lot of young people. We have people coming out to our groups regularly, but, but who are, who are my three? And more importantly, who's my one? Who's going to be the person who potentially can take it uh, to the next level once I'm not able to anymore? Because that's the reality, whether it be circumstantial or just someone who would be better, has different gifts that is able to take the ministry to a new level. And so I just wanted to read to you one more thing. Um, This is a charge for Timothy. This is from Paul in the letter of 2 Timothy before Paul is about to die. And I love this. I feel like it's very appropriate for the world we're living in today and speaking to potential people who will mentor teenagers. And it says this. Uh, This is Paul writing to Timothy. I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus who is to judge the living and the dead, and by his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, and exhort with complete patience and teaching. For the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching, but having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander off into myths. And I love this. As for you... Always be sober-minded, endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. So as we show up, this is Paul who has poured into Timothy, walked with him, seen him grow in the faith. I read First and Second Timothy this morning, and you just see this history, this heritage of faith that Timothy has, that Paul has had an opportunity to pour in and fan the flame. As he's about to go, he has confidence that the gospel will continue to go because of what Timothy has grown right. into through their mentoring relationship. And so when we talk about doing this and kind of engaging in this process mm-hmm. as a church kind of working together with the connections that you have and so on, there's two pieces, right? Yes. We need people like you guys yep. who say, I'm willing to invest myself in the life of a teenager who says, you know what, for the next year, because that's what we do, we commit for a year. You do less than that, it's kind of a little tough to get any yep. traction. Um, to commit for a year to say, I will meet and communicate regularly with one of these teens. That's one half. But then the other half is to actually have teens who yes. desire this. Yes. And as I understand it in our conversations, this yep. isn't just people that are in our youth group, but people that are in the school and not necessarily followers of Jesus yet. In fact, I would suggest most people in the school that will be interested in a mentoring relationship, having had conversations with like guidance counselors and stuff, are kids that don't know Jesus yet. So what an incredible opportunity to be able to even in- build that relationship with the opportunity to share faith and invite them into awesome. something deeper. Exactly. And so now, obviously, you might be interested but intimidated, right? If you're like me, you're like, well, that sounds amazing, but how do I do that? What does that look like? I mean... They're teenagers. What do we even talk about? How do we connect with them? Because um, for some of us, that, those years are a lot further in the rearview mirror than others, right? So, uh, but that doesn't matter because if you hear all the statistics, um, people who have wisdom that can speak in the lives of teenagers hold value, regardless of whether they're 20 or 50 or 70. It doesn't matter. Absolutely, and, and consistency. People, are, they're looking for someone who's not going to be flaky. They don't know, many of them don't know in their life people that aren't flaky who will show up sometimes and won't other times. They're dying for 
Consistency. So if you can just be consistent. So here's what we're going to do. Um, we want to kick this off in the fall, but we realize there needs to be some training. And so what we're going to do is we're going to do uh, a training. You need to come. If, you're, if this is something you're interested in, by the way, there's a sign up. Just put your name down. You're not committing yet. We just want to know who's interested. Uh, and then what we'd like you to do is if this is something that you would want to participate in, uh, is to come to a mentor training. We're doing two different days. You don't have to come to both. It's either or. We're trying to give you some options. Um, it's the better part of a Saturday. It's like from a nine to four thing because what we want to walk you through is kind of the foundations of what um, mentorship is, what it looks like. But then we actually want to talk about the practical aspects of well, what do you do? How do we engage? How are we going to get introduced to? What does that look like? How do you communicate? What are the safeguards? All those things that you need if we're going to do this well. And then our plan is to kick it off on Saturday, September 17th, the kickoff breakfast. And that's when we bring in the teens that are, are interested and signed up, their families, right? Because they, they obviously want to meet the people that are going to be yep. connecting with their kids. And we bring them all together and kind of start the process in September. Yep. That's Got it. that right? And so what could people expect when um, they do this? I, well, I would encourage you to pray for humility because I promise you, you will learn more from them than they will learn from you. Um, they might think that they're learning a lot, but... In, in all my years as a Young Life leader, I have learned tremendously more uh, from the kids that I've gotten to minister to than, they, uh, than I have taught them, I'm sure. I've, I've introduced some of them to Jesus, but I have seen the image of God more clearly than ever interacting with the people he created in his image. So it is, it is the privilege of a lifetime. Um, and I would, I would encourage you and, and maybe even challenge you, if not this, then what is it going to be? Because we are, our goal, our objective, our hope is to lay out as many stepping stones you can take from training to setting up the meetings to this. Um, and, and my hope and prayer is that we, collective, as a church, the Big C Church, the Body of Christ, would begin to look at what legacy we are leaving um, to future generations. Yeah. And so I think uh, this is kind of feeds into this whole idea of what is this going to look like? Because it's going to be a little different. The end goal is not to see them here on Sunday morning. We'd love to have them kind of be part of church. And, and we don't really care which one. Um, Jake, actually, your, your family actually attends just down the road here Dude, at Grace. Yeah. And uh, so that's not really the goal. The goal is to introduce these people to Jesus and help them grow in their faith. And if they already know God, grow deeper. If they don't, to introduce them. Yeah. And so we would love to see the kingdom grow and expand. So if this is something that interests you, put your name down. We'll be in contact with you. And uh, you could actually even sign up. You could even come to the training, hear all that, and then say, uh, yeah, that's too much. I can't do that. Or uh, at that point, say, I'm in. Because we need to know how many people are committed before we can go to the school and say, here's how many adults we got. We have 10 mentors, and we need we, 10, 10 students, kids, right? Yes. I guarantee there'll be more demand than we'll have supply. Yes. I would love it to be the other way around. And our, hope, and our hope is to partner in the future with other churches, too. Right? Yes, so we are, we're an incubator. We're kind of growing yes. something that does not exist in Sussex County in this way. Um, and so this will be kind of a trial thing. We get to be on the forefront of this. I'm very excited, so I'm hoping that uh, you engage with this. And I'll, if I can close with one, just a brief, quick story. So um, a couple of years ago, uh, my friend Zach, um, who I met when he was a freshman, he was involved in Young Life all four years, and he was a hot mess. Um, would say he knew the Lord. Was there fruit? No. Um, but would show up and would show up and would show up. And Zach now is, like I said, he's a great friend. He um, cuts my grass, doesn't go to church. But I just, pursuing that relationship with Zach has been so valuable. And I remember one time he was going through a really hard time. His parents really struggled with some really hard things. He lived with his grandparents and his sister, and he didn't know what was going on. Literally, it was like his whole world had been upended, and he didn't know which way was up. And I drove him home after Young Life. He would often be the kid who, even though he was a hot mess, he would ask me to drop him off last because he wanted just those few moments. So yeah, he, he wasn't pursuing the Lord, but he was still my one, if that makes sense. Um, and I remember getting to his house, and we're having a conversation, and I just said— um, and, and he broke down a little bit, and I said, Zach, there's nothing you can do that would make me walk away. You can't convince me that you are not worth the pursuit, because I think Jesus says that to all of us, no matter what we do. His love is actually perfect. And so to model that to a boy like Zach has enabled it to become a lifelong relationship, friendship, and continued conversations about the Lord. Is he doing everything I hoped he would do? No, but I'm not in control of that. The Lord is. And you are not in control of it either. The Holy Spirit is who draws people. So what he asks us to do is show up 
and be irrationally committed to kids like Zach and to kids. There are many of them out there. So, Thank you. Thank you for sharing. If you have questions, talk to Jake after. Um, you know, we're going to have these trainings. You'll have lots of opportunity to hear more, but uh, I'm excited. So uh, pray about it and get engaged with it. Sign up if you're interested. Awesome. Thank, Thank you. you. Yep. Thank you, Jake.